Okay, welcome back everyone, and welcome to another episode of Modern Mystics with me. And today we're going to continue our year-long theme of stepping into magnitude. And today's going to be a very practical show about how you can do that um, in a very practical way. And, and how do you do that? you actually do it through service. So actually the main theme of the show today is going to be through service and I have a video from David, a really beautiful video. It's just an amazing video. I've watched it like several times recently about service and and how important it is and I might pause it a few times while we watch it and speak more on some different topics. So yeah, we'll get right into it. Well, Projects are a backdrop for channeling the purpose of the Holy Spirit. So if you look at the problem and you start to realize there are no specific problems, there's no environmental problems, relationship problems, health issues, there's just no specific problems, but cracked or distorted perception is the problem. What do they say in the Bible? You, you, you look through a darkened glass, it says in Corinthians. That's a problem, looking through a darkened glass. You can't really see. None of us can see when we're looking through a darkened glass. So if, if distorted or fragmented perception is the problem, then what is it that will stabilize that distorted perception, that will clear away that darkened glass? Jesus says, only a, a single purpose can unify perception. Only a single purpose can unify perception. So we have this purpose in it. You can call it forgiveness. You can call it atonement. You can call it the miracle. You can call it one single intention. You can call it anything you want. But this one single purpose exercised, practiced, used, done through, will unify perception. So when we seem to have projects and tasks, well, let's take a look at that. That would have to be the purpose behind the projects and the tasks to unify perception. So I just want to give like a really practical example of that and how, how does that help you step into magnitude and wash away the littleness. And it's like, you know, it's like the purpose even for the body, it's like what have we used our lives for, like our whole life. You know, I've spoken about many times about how, you know, before I really stepped into my purpose, I was, you know, doing the seemingly typical things of the world, trying to, uh, I had my ambitions and my striving and seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. and. Basically, when you're running with the ego story, it's like everything you do seems to be out of this getting. It's like getting, getting, getting. And why is that? Because the ego is the belief in lack. So then, of course, it's like, okay, well, I seem to have this body now. I believe in the ego, and the ego is the belief in lack. So what am I going to do to solve this problem of lack? And the ego gives us a, a fake solution of getting. So it's all about get, 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 get as much as you can, you know, and it's all about the body too, so it's like get what you can for the body. Um, the three motives uh, for the, that the ego has for the body are pain, what was it, pride, pleasure, and attack. So whatever it might be, you know, whether it's like, whether it's, it's food you love to eat, or whether it's like, you know, for me, what it was was, um, I wanted to be a millionaire or whatever and buy certain things and build up a self-concept and of course self-concepts all around the body or whether it's like sex or pleasure of any kind you know it's like it's all about this getting and the ego says that's the solution to this belief in lack but the funny part is that the ego is the belief in lack so it's like you're asking lack how to solve itself and obviously there's no answer so it's like the ego brings you on a thousand adventures of the body where there's no solution. It's like you, 
you strive for something, you get there, okay, you had sex, you ate the cake, you, you bought the car, whatever it might be, you bought a new house, you finally had a family, you always wanted to get married, whatever it might be, and it's like, oh, you're temporarily happy because you're like, oh, yes, this is it. And then, of course, it gets back to, okay, that wasn't really it, and now you have to find a new goal, like a new carrot. The ego has to find a new carrot, and there's always another carrot because there's no answer within the ego's system, you know, within the, that system of lack. It's just this loop over and over and over. And so that's all that lack is. It's listening to the ego. You know, that's all that lack is. So what's the answer then? It's guidance. It's listening to the Holy Spirit. And then when you listen to the Holy Spirit, then the body gets used for a different purpose. You know, it's, it's being used for the purpose of forgiveness, for the purpose of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we call service. And here David's talking about we use projects. And, and that's the same thing as service, you know. So we use projects to flip our mind from the typical getting that we're so used to, to giving. You know, it's a complete flip. It's like, okay, turn the ship around. We're, we're so used to getting our whole lives, and now we're flipping into giving. And, and then you give, give, give. And what does giving do? It reinforces the spirit. And spirit, you know, is limitless, is unlimited, and gives forever. So when you give, you tell yourself basically that I have everything. And what does that do? There's no lack in that. How could you have lack if you have everything? So, so you flip the mind into giving. You keep giving, giving, giving through however that seems to look for you. The, the Holy Spirit will guide you to whatever the form seems to look for that, whatever the form and the, the function and form seems to look for you. Now here, you know, we're in a community. We seem to be in a community. I'm part of the studio team. I'm, uh, I'm on this show, so I have many opportunities. These are all given by the Spirit because I gave my life over to Him. And then I started following the guidance, and the guidance brought me here, and now we have a lot of projects that we solely use for this purpose of forgiveness and service. And so it's really beautiful because David's saying, you know, it's, it's one purpose. It's like, what is it for? So even while we're here in community, while we're working on a project, it's like, why am I really doing this? You know, it's like sometimes we get caught up like thinking that it's actually about the task that we're doing. Like, the other day I was up on the roof um, washing solar panels and then you know I just could see all this buzzing of like random thoughts and this and that and I was washing the solar panels and it was fine you know and fine is terrible and then all of a sudden I just stopped and I was like hold on what am I doing like what am I doing this for like why am I washing the solar panels you know it's like it's like these projects and this service is like within especially this community context it's like none of us came here to do any tasks it's like we're not here to make shows to make money or to grow a big audience or anything like that you know like we don't even have ads on our videos and so really yeah it's it's really about that single purpose of forgiveness it's like we all came here for awakening we all came here to heal the mind so i was just on that roof and i was like you know, random thoughts, thinking about whatever, and washing the solar panels, and then I just stopped, and I was like, yeah, why did I come here? Like, what am I doing this for? And then I was like, oh yeah, I came here for awakening, and that's what everything is for. Every single task is for that single purpose, and I'm not here to just do tasks for the sake of doing tasks. It's like, then what's the point of even following the Holy Spirit, you know? And the reason why the mind even wants to go there, to go into like, oh, into forgetting the purpose is because of littleness. You know, it's like this addiction to littleness. And that's, that's what we're washing away. And it, and it is a convincing process, you know. It is a convincing process. And, and through miracles and through an experience, through the service, then you see, oh wow, this is actually what I really want. I don't want this littleness. So it's an experience. And I also remember, it was really cool, like I think last year I went, for three weeks I went um, on a trip and I went to my, my cousin's wedding 
in uh, Amsterdam, and it was this like really fancy wedding. And, and so basically, I was at the monastery, I was in a lot of service, and then I went to this wedding, and I did have opportunities for service just because I had my laptop and I had some projects, but like I wasn't disciplined enough to really stay on top of that, so I, I kind of like slipped and let that go. And then, and then, yeah, basically, I was at this wedding and you know, everything was just so fancy and there's all of these like famous people and the 700 euros a night hotel and the food's like all perfect and everyone's dressed up so nice and everything in the forum was so perfect, um, seemingly. Like, and then the thing is, I had this contrast experience and, and it was nice because it was a given, it was a given trip um, to spend time with family and, and it was a really beautiful experience. But I did have this contrast experience where I came back from all that fancy form. I came back to Utah, and then, um, and then basically, yeah, I went to the backyard of the house in Camas, and I'm like, okay, service mode again. And then someone said, hey, Andy, can you help move these chairs and move this table into the truck? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I go over there, and as soon as I picked up the chair, I, I was like, my mind went from like here to here. Like I just felt lifted up immediately. And I was like, wow, like here I am just in Utah. I just picked up a chair and I'm about to help load a truck with chairs, like nothing fancy, right? Like I came from all this fanciness and stuff. But yet I feel lifted up. Like I feel so much better now that I'm back into this giving mode. And, and it's like, my mind just needed that structure um, and to have that project and to get back in the giving mode. And I just had that contrast experience and that was just a really cool example. And just another example of um, how beautiful giving is and service and projects is that I was at the monastery at the Tabula Rasa Mystery School. And basically what happened was uh, there was a wedding. Um, yeah, there was a wedding that we were setting up for and I was part of setting that up. And you know, it was like this big collaboration. A lot of people were all just putting things together. There was tech involved, there was a lot of things. And it was like this swirl of joy, you know, it was like beautiful service feeling, like collaboration. You're just, you're just like in the quantum field all together. And then that was really nice. And then, and then we started the wedding and we all sat down and it was like the, the main event. And, uh, and I noticed, like this is like, this was like a huge realization for me. Like for the first time in my entire life, I always had this belief, you know, the main event is the main event. You know, that's when, that's the big experience. That's where, when you're going to be really happy, whatever. And this was the first time that I experienced the service before the main event actually lifted me higher than the actual event. And obviously it has nothing to do with the event. But it was just a contrast experience that showed me like how important service is and how important giving is. And that it's like my function and my happiness are one, um, like today's review lesson. So yeah, we'll just continue with this video of David now. What would be the purpose of doing the dishes? To be done through so perfectly by the Holy Spirit or building something or repairing something or teaching something or singing or dancing or whatever the form was, the, the purpose would have to be forgiveness, the unified perception, to unify all of perception. And to be totally done through until there is no doer and you are simply a, aware that you are a being. So the whole point is to be done through. It's not, it's not to think I need to do nothing is talking about the form. Oh, that's a sneaky one, you know, the ego can get you and I need to do nothing and then after a while you start to feel bored, lazy, lethargic, you know, and you know that the ego has slipped another Mickey in the drink, you know, and, and you didn't even know it. You're like, I'm going to be on easy street today, I'm going to do nothing. And then you're like, I need to do nothing. Where's the joy? Where's the joy? Let's have some joy, you know, because you're trying to do, the ego is trying to do nothing. Miracles are involuntary. You know, it doesn't mean anything to you 
if you're not in the joy, if you're not truly, you know, coursed through by the spirit. So yeah, so that's that's what the projects are for. That they're only for one thing, and that's for unifying perception. And there's one part in the course where Jesus says, you can use the body with the Holy Spirit to expand your perception. I love that. Imagine somebody says, you sweep the floor, okay, and then you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to expand my perception. That's the truth. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, not, yeah, I'm going to get this sweep some under the rug here, see if they can see that. No, it's, it's, very, it's very different. The ego is devious, and the Holy Spirit is like, yeah, expand your perception. I remember one time I was in Denver, Colorado, at a spiritual group called, what this group called the School of Innocence, and, and uh, one of the people in the community, Joshua, was told by somebody there that he had to go out and rake the leaves in the backyard. And he was raking the leaves all right, but not like Ben. Ben's famous time where he was here at the monastery and I don't know who told you to go out. Was it Lisa or somebody told you to go rake the leaves? And Ben had long hair like Moses. And he had this big flowing robe on like Moses. And somebody here at the monastery had told him to go rake the leaves. There was like a 45 mile an hour wind outside and Ben grabbed that rake and I swear I was right here in this room and I was looking right out this window with Lisa. Lisa was right there and we looked out and we went, that's inspiring because Ben was out there dancing in the wind. He looked like Gene Kelly with this rake and he was raking and I mean the leaves were blowing all over the place and he, he wasn't literally raking the leaves for, to get them in a pile or anything because he couldn't get his rake on them. But he was like dancing away and his hair was blowing in the wind. This was back in those, before you had clean shaven, you had the long Moses hair and the big Moses robe and all the shiny sparkly things on it. And he was so happy and Lisa's like, all glory to God. Praise sweet Jesus, you know. And to me that was just a clear example of the miracle, because you said yes to rake those leaves, and damn if you could even rake a leaf, because it was blowing all over. Now let's get back to my story with Denver. I, I, this was the opposite of that. I remember looking out there, and Joshua was pissed. He was pissed. He was angry. And I remember going outside and walking up to him, and he's raking the leaves, and he's really, <laughs> he's really angry. Anger. Every emotion was anger, anger, anger. And so I said, well, stop for a minute. Let's just talk and everything. And he said to me, it's kind of the same thing along the line of Chris's question about what's the purpose. He said, what does raking leaves have to do with enlightenment? And I said, that's a really good question. Let's put the rake down and let's explore that. What does raking leaves have to do with enlightenment? I said, this is really good. I said, now, how are you feeling now? He said, I am very angry. And I said, well, what do you think's going on? He said, well, the so-and-so told me to rake the leaves. I don't want to rake the leaves. I'm not inspired to rake the leaves. I don't see the value in raking the leaves. I'm angry at this person for telling me and bossing me around. And I'd rather be doing anything else but raking the leaves. I said, okay, from all of that we can deduce that you're upset. And he said, yes. I said, okay, now, what does upset have to do with enlightenment? Let's take it away from what does the raking the leaves have to do with enlightenment. Let's just look at your state of mind. What does upset have to do with enlightenment? And he said, it, it doesn't have anything to do with enlightenment. And I said, so why do you think you're upset then? If you came here, what, what was the purpose? Did you, why did you come to this community? He said, I came here for enlightenment. But I said, but now you're upset. He said, yeah, I'm upset. But you came here for enlightenment, and now you're upset. So you're not in the purpose for which you came. He said, yeah, that's right. I said, why is that? He said, I, I don't know. 
I said, well, can you see that the purpose is a choice? Did you have a choice, your state of mind, regardless of what you're doing? And he said, yeah, I can see that. I said, well, why are you choosing to be upset? Well, because they told me I had to rake the leaves. I said, so you believe there's somebody outside of you, somebody not you, that told you you have to do something that you don't want to do? He said, yeah, that's it. I said, what's that have to do with enlightenment? He said, I don't, I guess nothing. I said, well, why are you choosing it? I don't know. I said, how did you get here? I said, did somebody twist your arm, come down to Louisiana and like put, twist your arm behind your back and say, you've got to go to Denver to get enlightened? No. I said, did you come here voluntarily? He said, yeah. I said, so you're here voluntarily. Nobody made you come. That's right. So you're here voluntarily. Yeah, that's right. And your purpose of coming is for enlightenment. Yes, that's right. And now you're upset. Yeah. Well, why are you choosing to be upset? Well, they, they told me I had to rake the leaves. <laughs> it's who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You know, it's no amount of evidence will convince you of what you do not want. Yeah, so that's why, you know, it's like that's why the desire is so important too. And the desire is what helps you remember like why you're do what you're what you're doing everything for. And I just remember something that always really helped me. And and actually, it was like several months ago. And you know, pre in my previous life, seemingly I made all these like beliefs and things about like cleaning and sweeping, and I never did any of those. And I had beliefs that like you know they're not for rich people and I want to be rich and I'm going to hire people to do these things and etc. So there was like this self-concept. So then this is an un unwinding and an undoing um, of all beliefs and, and concepts. So when I came here, a lot of what I did was cleaning and sweeping. And I remember uh, Ken, who's actually here with me, he said, hey, hey Andy, can you go sweep the path? And I was like, Rrr. and the, and, um, and it was kind of similar to this story at first. I could feel like, the, no, I don't want to do that kind of thing. But then I remembered, it's like remembering the purpose. And it's like, oh yeah, well, what would I even do that for? And the only reason I would do that is for happiness. And why, why is that even so? Because, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit's guidance. I came here for guidance. So if the guidance is for me to sweep something, and guidance makes me happy, then it has to be that if I follow the guidance, then I'm happy. It's like, it's very simple, right? So basically, I, that's what I told the Holy Spirit. I was like, okay, if this is your guidance, and guidance makes me happy, then I'm gonna go sweep this path, and I expect to be happy, and I'm just gonna keep an open mind. And that's my purpose. That's the purpose for why I'm doing this. And because I had that purpose out front, when I went and I started doing the task, I had this like beautiful experience. But you see, it's when we forget why we're doing things that we just switch back to this ego thing where it's like, oh yeah, sweeping paths, I'm not into that. It's like, of course I'm not into that because it's not about the form. It's not, that's not why I'm doing it. Not just to clean some path, you know, it's like, it's about that purpose to unify um, perception. And so that's why it's so important to remember, like, what is it for? Why am I doing this? Every single time you make a decision to do anything, actually. And, and it says here in Littleness versus Magnitude, chapter 15, section 3, uh, it's paragraph 5, it says, I asked you earlier, would you be hostage to the ego or host to God? Let this question be asked to you by the Holy Spirit every time you make a decision. For every decision you make does answer this and invites sorrow or joy accordingly. And so it's like this, this thing of control, this question of control comes in too, like seemingly with life. It's like, well, you know, I want to be able to control my life and that's how I'm going to be happy because I, I, I know what makes me happy. You know, there's already so many assumptions, like just taking it back to my life, like, yeah, I want to control my life so I can set it up exactly how I want it and I want it like 
the Lamborghini and the big house and the family and whatever. And then it's like, and, and that control will make me happy. But then when we think about it, it's like, okay, that control will make me happy. Whose control is that? It's like, hold on a second. There's, there's only the ego or the Holy Spirit. Seemingly there's a decision between the ego or the Holy Spirit in mind. So there's no third option, actually. So it's either, do you want to be hostage to the ego, be a slave to the ego, or do you want to be the host to God? There's no me, the ego, and God. You know, there's just a decision between the ego or God. So everything we do in our lives is a decision between the ego or God. A decision between being enslaved by the ego or host to God, free in God. So even all these seemingly desires and that we think we have, like that example I just gave, Lamborghini, big house, whatever, it's like, it's like there might even be this assumption that that's, that's my desire, but then it's like, oh wait, so who's the my, you know? Slave to the ego, basically or host to God. Those are the only two choices there are. So that's why it says, let this question be asked to you by the Holy Spirit every time you make a decision. And that's why every time you do something, every time, um, yeah, every time the body does something, it's a decision between those two. And it's a decision between getting or giving. Getting reinforces lack. Giving reinforces spirit and washing away the belief in lack and unworthiness. And so projects and service is a really helpful, it's like the bread and butter of awakening, it feels like, because it's like totally in this giving mode. It's like there's no getting at all in that mode. It's totally in alignment with the Holy Spirit. And, and yeah, we'll just continue on with this video of David. It's the purpose you bring with you it's the purpose in mind that you bring to the projects, that you bring to the whatever you're doing. That's everything. That's your decision. It's not that the world happens to you in some kind of accidental, oh, I happen to have a bad day because this happened to me and this and this and this. You know, remember the, the workbook lesson, myself, capital self is rule of the universe. It is impossible that anything should come to me unbidden my, by myself. Even in this world, it is I who rule my destiny. What happens is what I desire. And what does not occur is what I do not want to happen. Okay, you don't need a whole Course of Miracles. You can just use that one phrase that myself is ruler of the universe. The power of decision, Lesson 152, the power of decision is my own. He says, you may believe that this is too all-encompassing to be the truth, Jesus says power of decision is my own. But, he says, truth has no exceptions. Indeed, that's exactly the way it is. Everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. And there are no exceptions, ever, ever, ever. So this is where we're zooming in to enlightenment, where we start to take the empowering journey of seeing how powerful our mind is, the power of decisions, and we don't try to let ourselves get snagged into this idea that we're just raking leaves, or just doing the dishes, or just chopping the celery, or whatever, which the ego would have us freeze into. Because why? Because that's littleness. And the ego wants us to be content with littleness and just leave it at that. Just stay guilty and little. And, and a unified purpose lifts us up higher and higher and higher into a state of the celestial glory, you know, to, to a level of mind which we see is all encompassing. So it's never about the project. It's more about the motive. What's the motive? What, what is it for? What's the motive for the project? And for me, that's the best thing in my life is it doesn't matter if I have 50 emails the number doesn't matter. Uh, I just pray, and if I'm guided to pick out two or three and respond to those, then that's everything. And I've never felt a sense of coercion. I've never felt a sense of duty. 
it's, it's not fun to feel that you have a duty to serve the Holy Spirit, you know. An obligation. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a day serving the Holy Spirit. I'm obligated uh, to the Holy Spirit today. You know, where's the fun in that? I, I would always say, what the Holy Spirit wants for me is for me to be happy. To me, for me to be inspired, for me to experience myself as I truly am, and not to hold on to this idea of what David wants, what David wants, what does, David doesn't want. You know, that's going to get me nowhere. Most of the tasks that I did at the very beginning, um, even ones that, that the Holy Spirit would, would ask me to do, talk to somebody or call somebody and do this and this, I had trepidation and fear and doubt at the beginning because it was so out of pattern for the way I was living my life. And yet I still followed and I felt burst of joy after I got off the phone, after I visited somebody in the hospital, made a paid a visit to their house. I was just swelling with joy because I listened and followed even when the ego was saying, don't do it, don't do it, stop. You're going to lose your autonomy. You're going to lose your individuality if you keep following in that little voice. I just kept at it. No, I like. I tell the ego, I like that joy. I like that feeling of joy. I want more of that feeling of joy. And so I, I lost myself in that um, joy. I lost my ego, you could say, not my true self, but in that experience. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I really want to honor that, honor that message from David and just feel really inspired to be in that service and, and wash away this littleness. And thank you guys so much for joining me this week. And I'll see you next week on Modern Mystics. And thank you and enjoy the next show. Thank you so much.